So today, I want to put together a super basic, beginner-friendly, off-grid system using the lead time 100 amp hour mini, a Victron MPPT 130, and an Ampeak 1200 watt inverter. So I'm gonna put it together on this scrap piece of plywood that I've had from other projects in the past. Just something to hold all the components together. Look how light this battery is. That's a 100 amp hour battery and I can just kind of handle it with ease. So just put the battery maybe right there in the middle. Let's get this little strap out of the way. It comes off easily. Let's just set the charge controller there. Let's put the inverter right here. So since this is going to be so basic, I'm just going to hook everything up to the battery terminals and skip any kind of bus bars or shunts or anything like that. I just want to show you what the bare minimum is you need to get started. And if you only got a couple of devices like a charge controller and an inverter, you can absolutely hook them directly up to the battery terminals. Now this is the positive terminal of the inverter. So we absolutely want to have a fuse and we're just gonna strap that directly to the terminal of the inverter. Some people will tie it directly to the terminal of the battery. And ideally, the best solution is to have a fuse holder for this. So your mileage may vary on that, but today that's the way that we're gonna do it. Just for simplicity, I've already got a positive wire built, so I'm gonna bolt that directly, that fuse directly to the positive wire. All right, so I've got a piece of heat shrink tubing to cover the bolt. That way, uh, it just minimizes anything coming in contact and shorting. And there we go. Okay, so we've got a positive fused wire 10 gauge for the positive side of the charge controller to the battery. And that's gonna go on the same terminal as the inverter. Okay, so I've got a piece of wire with terminals already connected that I've made up to go on the negative side of the inverter. Uh, before we install that, I wanna show you guys what I use to crimp these on. So this is a really inexpensive hydraulic crimper that you can find on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description, but it's uh, real simple to use. The kit comes with a bunch of different dies for different size crimps, and they're super easy to change out the dies. You just push them in. And if you buy these inexpensive terminals, I recommend these plated ones. You might be tempted to get the pure copper ones, but that's not a good idea, guys, because that copper is going to um, oxidize, and it's going to not only look horrible, but it's going to create a bad connection over time. These plated ones are the same thing. They're copper, but they're like plated with a nickel or something like that, and that nickel plating is going to keep them from corroding. To use these crimps, you just tighten this part off right here where it says off and then you can pump it and put your terminal in now this one's already crimped but we can see the process and you just pump it down until you can't pump anymore and then let it and release it and that's got that creates an incredibly strong crimp you can't pull it apart like here I'll put two screwdrivers in here ah, I'm using all my strength there guys that's going nowhere I literally paid less than 40 bucks for this thing the whole kit so that's kind of a, a crazy good deal the other option, a cheaper option, is to use this hammer-based one. And uh, you just lift up that and put your crimp and wire in. 
and you put it on a hard surface and you just smash it with a hammer and then it creates a divot here that will then crimp it. I've used both of them and they both work very well. So it's up to you. I think the hydraulic crimper is the cleaner solution and it may be a may possibly be a better crimp. And when I make my cramps, I also like to put heat shrink on these. Okay, and so when you're going to make the final connection of your inverter, be it the positive or the negative, yeah, you need to use a resistor to pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter. Otherwise, you're going to get a big spark. We can just hold it between the negative terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the inverter for maybe about 10 seconds. And that should be good. See, that way we didn't get any spark. And lastly, we just have a negative wire for our charge controller. And so the crimper I just showed you, hydraulic crimper I just showed you, will crimp small crimps just like this. So you can just buy these in kits that have all different kinds of sizes. So the, the benefit of the hydraulic one is it can crimp these sizes, these smaller sizes, whereas the hammer cheaper version, uh, I don't think it's going to be very good at crimping these smaller ones. The other thing that I like to do is to use these ferrules. So whenever you strip your wire, you've got wires just kind of frayed all over the place. And, and then you start to try to put it into, say, your charge controller. And you don't know if these wires are going into the wrong spots. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to short anything out. So I like using these. It makes it really, really clean. And I, I got a kit that comes with an assortment of ferrules and the crimper tool. I'll put links in, that, in the description for those two. All right, so let's put our negative wire from the charge controller. So if you are going to stack these battery terminals like I've done right here, put the highest current demand wires on first and then the, the lower current wires on top of that. That's pretty much almost it with the exception of adding some solar to this to charge. But we can now turn our inverter on and everything is fused and safe and super simple. So let's uh, hook up some solar and start charging. All right, guys, so I went ahead and added a solar disconnect here in the mix. Because you really, it's really useful to have one. You probably should go ahead and factor that in as part of the minimum. All right, and there is the app for the Victron Smart Solar. And as you see, we don't have any solar coming in yet because I haven't flipped the switch here. For you guys to set up a 12 volt lithium battery with this controller, it's very easy. Really, all you need to do is select a volt, the, your battery voltage. So if it's 12 volts, make sure you select 12 volts and then select this preset, smart lithium, uh, lithium iron phosphate preset. I always use that one and it works great with these controllers and that's basically all you need to do so now let's flip the switch and see if we get some solar power in all right already we've got over 400 watts of solar so around 420 watts is going to be the max on this controller when you're using a 12 volt system as you can see uh, we're pulling 20 about 30 amps of current through it right now and so it's a 30 amp controller so that's as that's max as it's going to go now it it may pull a little bit more wattage as the voltage goes above 13.8 um, we have it set to where it can go up to 14.2 uh, so you'll get maybe a little bit more watts but uh, that's pretty much going to be maxing this guy up now if you were to go with a 24 volt system on the same controller, uh, you would double that number. So you would get over 800 watts of solar power. But as we can see, this is a fully functioning system. We can power AC loads like this uh, heat gun. 
pulling 450 watts right now with the heat gun. And so the thing that I suggest, whenever you put your system together, you need to stress test it. So basically put the whole thing under load as much as possible. And then we're gonna check to see if there's anything heating up or anything that's going wrong. I'm gonna hook up this space heater to act as a load on the system. All right, so I've got it pulling 900 watts, a little over 900 watts. So that's getting close to my max 1200 watts. So I think that's gonna be a good stress. And what we wanna do is just let it run for a period of time to make sure everything is good. And as we'll see here, we should be having the max amount of solar coming in. And so we got 400, a little over 400 watts of solar coming in. Our solar controller is maxing out at 30 amps. And it's handy to have a little infrared thermometer. That way you can check the temperature of certain areas to see if there's anything getting excessively hot. You can use your hand. If it's uncomfortable to touch, then you're probably running into a problem that you want to rectify. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Check all wires and terminals. Let me see, we got 87 Fahrenheit on this terminal. It's like 87 on this terminal. 87 here. Uh, we got a little bit more, around 100 Fahrenheit on this terminal that we've got the fuse mounted on. Now I will definitely say I've never used this kind of inline fuse holder. I pretty much just got that as something simple to use for this video, but I can definitely tell you it's a little bit warmer than what I would consider I would be comfortable with. It's warm enough to where the rubber is quite malleable. And it's oh, it's 125 degrees. So right off the bat, I would say don't use that. <laughs> Find a different fuse solution than these inline fuses like this. Um, this is a, a 10 gauge wire. So it's uh, capable of handling 30 amps. But this is warmer than what I'm happy with. Yeah, the fuse is definitely quite warm. Yeah, it, it may be okay, but I think over a period of time, this will start to break down because of all the heat. I've seen them actually do that. Yes, I would, uh, I would not use that. So everything's relatively cool here. On the battery. Yeah, so it's definitely important to go ahead and stress test these things after you put them together before you put yourself in a situation where you're going to rely on it. Uh, you don't want to be on the road. You don't want to be camping with a system that you haven't tested. You just assemble it and just assume that it's all going to be fine. So we'll go ahead and turn off the inverter. And we'll let the solar go ahead and charge our battery back up. Okay, now let's talk about some other options. I think one of the, one really important one, but not absolute necessary, is a shunt. And the reason why you would want a shunt is, well, you don't really know how much charge is in your battery. Uh, one misconception that a lot of people still have is that you can just determine the state of charge of the battery by the voltage. A lot of times you can see on your inverter, oh look, it says 60%. Well, that thing doesn't know. That's just basing that on voltage. And that might actually be pretty accurate for lead acid batteries, but it's completely inaccurate for a lithium battery because of these lithium batteries, the charge and discharge curve the voltage level looks real flat. There's not a whole lot of deviation, especially in the middle. So a shunt will basically keep track of the power coming into the battery and going out of the battery and give you uh, pretty much a fuel gauge. And this one is a smart shunt. This is a TBD smart shunt, which is kind of like a Victron lookalike. And it has an amp, 
that you connect to on your phone via Bluetooth. Uh, the other thing that you might want to install is bus bars. So basically, uh, instead of tying everything to the terminals of your battery, you would tie your battery into the terminals on this bus bar, and then you would tie your solar charge controller into another set of the terminals, and then you would tie your inverter into another set of these terminals. Uh, so it's kind of like the central point where everything will connect. So these are these are real handy. Just takes up a little bit more space, but if you got a little space, it, these can be quite nice to help manage your wiring. And uh, these bus bars right here have some smaller screws so you can actually branch off and run other smaller devices. Now you want to make sure everything has a fuse, okay? So don't just connect directly to any of these things without going to a fuse. Another option that you can get that I don't have right now, well actually I can show you one. So another nice thing that you can get is a fuse terminal block. This allows you to bring your main positive and your main negative in. So you could run these to uh, the terminals on your battery as well. But this allows you to run, say, lighting or any other 12 volt devices. And it has fuses built in. So everything that you connect, you've got a negative, you've got a positive side, and everything will have its own fuse. This one's made by Blue Sea Systems. I don't know if you can see that. Blue Sea Systems. They're a little bit more pricey, but honestly, these are high, very, very high quality. I would recommend these over the mega cheap units that you find. Like, you can literally find ones that are 10 or $20, and this one might end up costing you 35 or $40. So it's maybe double the price, but this is a very high quality unit. It's not going to go melting on you unless you do something uh, wrong with it. All right guys, so there's my super simple build of a 12 volt off-grid solar system. This can be used just like this in your van, your RV, your off-grid house or cabin, or if you just wanna take this thing camping with you, it can be used just like this. This is kind of pretty much self-contained. And with these mini batteries, this is so, convenient because they're smaller and they're lighter they're going to take up a whole lot less space if you see that side profile there it's a uh, very thin it doesn't take up a whole lot of space whereas the other batteries are quite a bit larger all right so i hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe if you uh, do enjoy this content that really helps my channel out a whole lot and i'll catch you guys on the next one